The Production Assistant works great inside of Sony Vegas, but there are some things that you can do with Production Assistant where you don't work with the Vegas timeline at all. It's this particular set of processes that are great if you've got someone coming in late at night or maybe you just simply want to set something up and go home and, and not mess with it or not worry about it. So these processes don't use the Vegas timeline at all, but they do use the Vegas engine. So you're going to access these by opening up Sony Vegas and working within the Production Assistant tool, never putting media on the timeline. Let's take a look. The first thing that I want to do is I'm going to tear Vegas out of the docking window or tear Production Assistant out of the Vegas window there. We can even enlarge that so that you can see more of what's going on here. All right. Now let's add some files into our source media bin. So let's go through and uh, I think we'll scroll up here. We'll grab a couple of pieces of video here. Just choose open. So I've selected some HDV files here that I want to work with. Let's go to the processing tab and we'll choose image overlay. Now we have several different processes that we can add here, but for the time being, we're gonna work with the image overlay. Let's go into edit to see what we've got. I have an add image overlay, and you can see here I've got the vast logo, and that's what's going to come in as a bug in all of my video. So we'll choose okay. Now we also could choose add intervals or distribute evenly. So if I were to say choose add intervals, have it come up as often as I would like. Currently it's set up for every 10 minutes, but we might want to set that up so that it comes up, say, uh, every 30 seconds. There we go. And we're not going to have a start offset. We'll have it start where it begins. Now, if we didn't want that overlay, we could go look for it. Now, keep in mind, this needs to be a 32-bit file that's got an alpha channel if you want it to lay over properly. So you'll want to build this in Photoshop or uh, your photo editing software so that it does match the pixel dimensions and it does uh, come into the, the bottom where you'd like it to come in. We'll choose OK. And then the next thing we're going to do is choose target output. Now we're going to set this up so that it's video for Windows with NTSC DV widescreen. Remember, these are HDV files. So we're going to set these up to be a DV proxy. We could go into edit list and we can choose any number of different file formats here. We'll call those open here. It'll just take a moment. Okay. So it might be that we want to add more file formats to our, our batch render here. So let's, uh, let's remove this one and we'll go in and choose that we also wanted to output say an MXF or maybe an MP4 so that we can email it to someone. What size of an MP4 would we like it to be? We could have it be set up for a memory stick or uh, for AVCHD. We might want to set that up so that it's going out for Blu-ray. So we've got a number of different choices here. I'm going to set this up so it's going out to an AVCHD 1440 by 1080 format and I'm going to stretch it to fill the output frame size. So we're outputting two different formats here. Great. So we've got both of those set up and save the uh, output markers in the media file. We'll choose OK. Now at this point, we can walk away from Vegas once we hit this process tab. So we'll click process. And you can see that it's processing these images already in the background. So depending on the file type you've chosen for output, this could take a while, just depending on, on how you've got your system set up. So again, this is designed so that you might get up and walk away or if you're working with Sony Vegas of course we can open up another instance of Vegas and be working while this is running in the background. So you can see this is another way that Vegas can be a huge time saver. Your batch processing files in the background while you might be editing in another instance of Vegas somewhere else. Now I particularly like this feature when I'm working with event video. It might be that I've got several different things going on at once where I'm ingesting video or I'm processing video while I'm editing video for another form of output or maybe I've edited several videos together and I simply want to batch output all of them, this is a great way to be able to work at, at the end of the day. You could output 20 or 30 or 40 video files at the end of the day if you want to use this batch output format. So let's look and see how this is doing. We can see here it's still processing our, our video files and they are laying up on the timeline as it's going. And we've also got a, a veg file laid up in the background that's doing the same thing. So we'll just let this roll through. And you can see in the background uh, where this is rendering up here and see the render taking place complete with the logo on top. We'll let that just continue to run and we'll have a look at it in just a moment. All right, so now our, our uh, render is finished. Let's just redock this just so it's out of our way for a moment. 
And here's the veg file that it's set up in the process of working with those M2T files. We can see here that it's, it's put the VAST logo over all of them. But of course, we did render that out. So let's go up to where we stored those in My Documents and uh, My Videos. And we didn't give those names, so here's an, the uh, unknown AVI. Remember, we set that up to do it to give us a uh, an NTSC DV widescreen proxy. Kill that audio there, and we'll speed that up. We'll see that logo pop in here somewhere pretty quick. There we go. There's our watermarked piece of video. It's also there at the very head of our video. And then finally, let's look at our MP4. And we didn't give that a name again, so let's look at it down here. There's our MP4. So you can see how this batch processing tool can be of tremendous benefit. Let's look at what else is available to us in the output options because there's quite a few more tools that will help you make sure that your video comes out properly. Let's tear this back off again. So we've got it in the middle of our screen. There we go. Now one of the things that you'll notice here is we've got an audit project. Let's click on this audit project button. And we can audit the entire project or just selected tracks. And what does this mean? What this means is Vegas is going to go through and look for errors on the timeline that you're instructing it to look for. For instance, we might want to check the opacity level and make sure that we ac haven't accidentally clicked on one of these opacity switches over here. And if we do see it within 2% of 100%, we can force the opacity to 100%. This can save you a tremendous amount of grief, and it will also speed up your renders. It can also look for gaps or overlaps. So it might be that you've got some one frame gaps or overlaps, and you can have it remove those gaps or overlaps, but really I think the better idea generally is to drop a marker so that it can come in and ask you that if you meant to have a gap or an overlap in there. Now, for instance, you might have some fades to black where you've left a two frame black space in between a couple of video files. You don't want this to move those together, but you might want it to drop a marker to just remind you or let you know that you've got that in there. Or you can ignore this feature in the audit tool completely if you wish. So we can turn that off or, or leave it on. I'm going to leave it off for the moment. It'll go through and find events that are smaller than a given size. For instance, sometimes you might find you've accidentally left a one or two frame sliver of video on the timeline. It'll go find them. Or maybe you've stacked events on top of each other. This will find the buried events. It might be that you've got some duplicated media on there, and it might be that you've got some unused takes. This will allow you to go through and remove all of these different things or give you a marker to indicate that some of these things are in the, in the project itself. These will speed up your renders and also help you keep your timeline a lot more clean. This next feature is for those that are using XDCAM. Now, if you're using an XDCAM camera, you know that you can import proxies, edit the proxies, and then exchange the proxies for the full resolution files. Well, it might be that you've started your project and you've replaced the proxies with the full files and realized you missed something and you start working with proxies again. But the second time or third time, maybe you accidentally don't remove the proxies or convert the proxies to the full res files. We'll go through with Production Assistant and find all those full res files for you. So we make sure that all of the files on your timeline are always the full resolution files when you're using Production Assistant. So this is an invaluable tool to those of you that are working with XDCAM in the XDCAM HD or XDCAM SD project systems or camera systems because it's very easy to accidentally leave a proxy on the timeline. So this alone is a fabulous feature. It's something that Vegas by itself can't do. So the Production Assistant does allow you to go through and find those. So all we need to do is set up this audit and run OK, and it's going to go through and look for anything that's in there. Now in this particular case, it didn't find any problems, but we might want to choose place markers or place regions if we had issues. Here's all of the events that were found in the project, and we don't have any problems in here. There's nothing that's overlaid that shouldn't be. So we've audited our project, and our project is just fine. So we can run this back up here and dock it again. And we might even want to uh, start with a clean timeline so I can show you a couple of other things that are available in here. So let's open up our golf project again that we were working with earlier. 
Okay, we've got all of our lower thirds and, and so forth and everything else is there. Let's drag this down one more time so that we've got a, a clear view of it. Now it might be this time that we need to output a variety of different folder formats so that we can burn DVDs and go to the web and so forth. Let's choose where we want this to go. You're never going to want to use the default location. So in this case, it might be that we want to go to our external 10K drive and we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this temporary files. Choose OK. Now we need to choose what kind of output formats we want. Now we've got quite a list here already. So it might be that we want to set this up for uh, 30p for all web sizes and formats or maybe we want a, a, a NTSC DV widescreen with AC3 audio. That means that we've got an MPEG2 file going out to DVD and we've got an AC3 file that's going to accompany it. But let's edit that list and let's come in here and add another one. So our file type next is probably going to be something along the lines of ABCHD. So let's choose main concept ABC and let's choose one of our templates here. Let's choose the large user generated content widescreen template and we'll add that. And then let's go through and choose a small UGC widescreen and we're going to also choose 30p there. We'll add that one. So now we have four different types of, of output files that we're going to create with our project here. So there's really not much for us to do. We just simply need to click the process tab and it's going to go through and render all of the existing file formats. And we currently haven't given a base file name, so make sure that you name your file. In this case, we'll call this our golf test and it will give golf test as the base file name to everything that is going in here. So we've got these three different file formats that are all going to go out with the name golf test. And once you hit that process button, again, it's a great time for you to be able to get up and go grab a cup of coffee or a can of soda or go home for the night. So this batch rendering tool, you can batch render as many different file formats as you'd like to. So maybe you need to archive to XDCAM and output to DVD and output to the web. And maybe you need an AVI file that you can ship over to someone else to do some processing with. So these are just some of the file formats that you can work with in the batch file process. There's more. Let's look. Now, even though this is a processing tab option, I'm going to come back to the processing tab real quick. We're going to add a format. It might be that we need to, to uh, output an image sequence. So we'll choose output image sequence here and it allows us to decide whether we want to output JPEGs or ping files. And we can prepend the project name if we want and give it a, a project name and point to where we want it to go and choose where we want it to uh, capture its files and generally we're going to want to capture JPEGs or pings at each frame. Now why would we want to capture an image sequence on output? Maybe you're working with After Effects or Maya or Lightwave or one of the other project types where you want to output the video as an image sequence to import into that particular application. You might find it a little easier to work with. Or maybe it's that you have unmatching codecs. So here we can output ping files or, or portable network graphic files. Or maybe you just simply need some, some JPEGs as thumbnails to put up on a web page or something like that. It's going to output JPEGs or pings at whatever the project resolution might be. So if you've got a 720 by 480 or a 1440 by 1080 or a 1920 by 1080 project, it's going to output a ping or a JPEG in that particular file type or size. So this is another output option, even though it's found under the process window. We still need to look at some of the things that are inside the process window, but this is really more of an output option. But um, be aware that it's there so that you can send off to another project or send off to another NLE or perhaps to uh, your 3D compositing tool or, or whatever else you might have.